everything I got wrong about dating as someone with an avoidant attachment style. Um, this is like a follow-up to my other video. If y'all thought the dragging was gonna stop then, sorely mistaken. Coming for everybody's scalps, including mine, which is red now. Cause there has been growth, change, and evolution since then. But at the end of the day, I'll be avoiding stuff. Let's get into it. It's not that you feel that you don't deserve love. You just don't know how to receive it. Cause I've heard from therapists in the past and just like friends and just people, you know, random documentaries on Netflix about how like avoidant folks, like we just, we just feel like we don't deserve love when really it's like, nah, no, no, I deserve love. I never thought that, never felt that quite, quite. I'm overdue for it, actually. I'm in a deficit, actually. Run it back, actually. So that point of like, oh, you just don't feel like you deserve love, that's never resonated with me, especially because I'm a lover girl too. So I'm like, that really never resonated with me. But instead, I think what it is, is we don't know how to receive it because we literally didn't. A big reason why a lot of people with avoidant attachment styles exist in the first place is because we, learned how to deal with not receiving the love that we needed. And so in our adulthood, we don't know how to receive the love that we didn't get. It's reframed as something that's weird. Why are you doing too much? Why do you wanna hang out with me? You don't even know me like that. It's reframed as this thing that's suspicious. And I also wanna mention that belief is different than behavior. Like we can believe that we deserve love, but if we behave in a way where we're putting walls up, we forbid people from showing us love, we don't allow love to actually work within our lives, we don't allow ourselves to be loved on, we don't allow ourselves to be vulnerable enough for someone to see us, for someone to love us authentically, the behavior does not show that you actually want to receive love. The behavior shows that you're used to not having it. Like even feeling it within yourself, like you don't know how to accept the love that you have, that you've created on your own towards yourself or to someone else. Like you'll, like you'll find yourself asking questions like, oh, I wanna talk to them, is that normal? Or, oh, I found myself wanting to hang out with them a lot. Or when I'm alone, like I just wanna hang out with them. Is that normal? When I'm out of the mall and I see something that I think that they'll like, is it weird that I wanna buy it for them? Like, I know I hung out with them yesterday, but I kinda wanna hang out with them today. Is that weird? Is that normal? All of it's normal. Having genuine interest and curiosity in a connection is really fucking normal. Like, the most normal shit. We're normies, guys, I promise, we're normies. What may not be normal is the rate at which we do some of these things, which, you know, I know there's lesbians in the audience. I know y'all felt that one. I, I might need to do one on love bombing because Love bombing is our middle name. Sorry to tell you, but it is. So because most of us haven't received love in a way that actually allows us to feel seen or receive love in a way that is genuinely like helpful and productive, when it is shown to us, we don't know what we're looking at. We're suspicious of it. We second guess it. And ultimately it's not bad. Like obviously, you know, I say this with an asterisk because people are weird. People are super weird and they be doing too much. But for the most part, the type of love or consideration, affection that I'm talking about right now that could be offered to you is not bad. I really hope y'all feel liberated by this next point. Not being avoidant isn't the answer. Learning to work with it is. I think that with therapy and more people becoming a bit more knowledgeable about what's going on emotionally with themselves, mentally, in their relationships, they're, they're trying to solve family traumas and all this other shit. I think that we think that the answers, I think that we think that everything needs to come to, everything that's bad or everything that maybe causes issues or conflict needs to come to a dead stop. And I just don't think that cosplaying as someone who's who's not avoidant is the answer i think that the emotions that we have are currency just because they might be rooted in something unfortunate that happened or it's rooted in you know a, a negligence or a lack of love from the past i don't think that that means that we are just these broken wounded people you know what i'm saying like i think that a lot of us need space i think a lot of us need time to process how we feel i think a lot of us 
need time to understand how we feel in the first place. Maybe we isolate. I don't think that isolating is an issue in and of itself. Isolation when it goes on too long or isolation when it does start to harm you, then it becomes an issue. But all of these things like, but all of these things aren't inherently bad. Hyper-independence, isolation, uh, distrust, fear of commitment, independence. You can take care of yourself. You're self-sufficient. You're on your Zoom. That's a good thing. Isolation. You need a little time to yourself. You need to go sit off in a corner and examine how you feel, investigate how you feel. Babies and kids need that. Distrust. You literally cannot trust everyone. And you should use discernment when knowing who to give your trust to or not. That's a good thing. And then fear of commitment. We don't want to choose the wrong person to invest in. We want to make sure that the relationships that we're in are safe. That is a good thing. So on a scale, all of these are fine. And I don't like that just because you're labeled avoidant means that like, because you have these characteristics about you, you need to just completely wipe them out in order for you to be in a healthy relationship. I just don't think that's the case. And I think that there's a lot of humanness in being avoidant that tends to like, people don't tend to have empathy for those things, especially if they're not used to being around someone who's a little bit of a slower burner or who maybe needs a little bit more of a second to process or to understand what the fuck is going on in their head. Like you don't go to therapy to be like, make me not avoid it anymore. No, it's like you, you learn about it, you know what's going on and then you learn how to move through things and you learn which parts of your attachment style are safe versus which ones are not. You're not being smothered, they just like you. And guess what, girl? You probably like them too. We will be in full relationship mode with someone and then the moment that they call it that or that they have the what are we conversation, we be like, uh, I don't wanna be in a relationship. This is what I've realized. If you're hanging out with them often, if you're having meals, y'all are being intimate, even if you're not calling it a relationship, you are already in the act of choosing this person. You're choosing this person to hang out with. You're choosing this person to spend your time with. You're choosing to spend money on this person. You're choosing to share time with this person. A relationship is a whole lot of choosing people. And because we're avoidant, we tend to reframe things that are positive as negative. I'm just saying we need to look at the facts. There is an energy exchange that's happening that you're like, not really willing to acknowledge as a positive thing. You are also engaging with them. And I think that avoidant folks can at times like be a little self-centered, I'm not gonna lie. Just like a little self-centered into thinking that someone's motives or motivations are solely based on what they want. When really it's like, there's been an energy exchange. You've been choosing this person. They've been in your house. You enjoy spending time with them. And so it's not like, they're 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 stalking you and they're smothering you and they're in this very one-sided you know dynamic where they're receiving absolutely no energy absolutely no reciprocity no joy or anything from you if you don't want to be in a relationship that's fine but let's just once again look at the facts you have been showing a pattern of enjoying companionship with this person it's not wild for them to call it out avoidant folks lack boundaries there's a reason why which i'm going to get into in a second but we lack boundaries and what one thing that has irritated me about myself while while also like being in cahoots with other avoidance is we will be very quick to be like you're smothering me you're doing a lot you hit me up too much you call me too much why are you on my body why do you like me so much you don't even know me it's like it's a lot of this but we never say hey i could use a little space or hey I think this weekend I'm gonna spend some time to myself and just my, with my friends. Or hey, I'm actually not a big texter, so I don't love, and I don't love being on my phone like that. Like we don't say stuff like that, and yet we judge people or criticize people for engaging with a, with a flow of energy that's already been created by you as well. Because there's also the reality that maybe it is overstimulating. Maybe it is a lot. Maybe you grew up in a situation or a household where like there wasn't a lot of talking or there wasn't a lot of movement. And so someone giving you energy like that, it could genuinely just like avoidant stuff to the side. It could genuinely just be a lot. It could genuinely be overstimulating. It's a little bit too much. So if you need a minute, if you have a longer processing time, then you have to say that rather than 
making someone that you chose to hang out with the villain because they don't know about boundaries that you never told them. And this is something that I touched on a little bit earlier, but I'm just going to make it its own point because I really do feel like this is this is the hill. This is the marketing. This is where we get a bad rep. Our lack of boundaries looks a lot like criticism. People tend to want predictability, consistency, um, and consideration. And they're gonna want that energy to be reciprocated, especially if we're dating, especially if you're in like a love space, right? I have absolutely been the girl that has said, you call me too much. Why are you hitting me every day? Do you not have your own life going on? Like, why am I, why are you thinking about me this much? Why is, why, 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 why? Why do you, why are you exercising your access to me? Why, why are you, sh why are you showing me that you like me? Why? I think to save everyone some time, you, you need to let people know who you are at the beginning, at the beginning, or at least not too late. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I'm actually kind of a slower paced, slow burner, slow burner type of person. Like, so I like you, but talking on the phone every day is not really for me. Or, you know, maybe we can hang out on the weekends, but during the week I like to like have my alone time or like have my me time. You're allowed to say that. But what ends up happening is we don't say these things. We don't think that our needs are important enough to mention. And so then when people start showing up and trying to provide some type of consistency or provide some type of value, some type of, some type of predictability, because those things generally tend to feel more safe than something that's a bit more volatile, unpredictable and rocky as fuck. Like we're like, oh, you're doing too much. You didn't, you, how they, that person doesn't know what a, that person does not even know what is enough for you. Have you told them what's enough for you versus what's too much? Or have you just told them that they're too much? And this is just me, like me personally, me. I think that when people learn that I have an avoidant attachment style, they're almost like ready for me to leave or like almost like ready for me to hit them with the oof, ah, ooh, 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 back up, 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 because that's what they're used to. And I think that that's generally the reputation amongst avoidant people. Um, but what I've learned is by telling people, yo, like I, these are everything I've said in this video are things that I've said, like, I don't like being on the phone like that. I'm not a big texter. Like, I like you. I want to hang out, but tonight I just want to spend time by myself or, um, you know what? We don't need to do this every day. We can do this every other day. Like that is safe to me. And I think that we should reframe our boundaries as what is going to make this environment safe. Because when you expose those things to another person, then they're also gonna know how to make something feel safe. Um, for example, like me dating now, I'm really trying to focus on work because when you're dating, you're meeting new people, you're having new connections, you're going out a little bit more. It's really easy for me to get distracted, especially if I have like a date that week or just like, you know, I'm entertaining people, whatever. So for me, I make it known. I say, hey, I'm actually really focused right now or yo, like I don't have the capacity to like really, really prioritize this right now because I have X, Y, Z going on because low key X, Y, Z was going on before I even met you, baby. So it's not your job to make sure that someone can freely exist in your life. Like, I don't even think that that is something that happens in healthy relationships. I think that your job is to make sure that you construct a, a safe life. And that involves communicating to other people what safety looks like to you. And if it is a problem for someone, they are not for you. And I would even argue that the person that is for you is going to ask you or want to know that ahead of time. The, they're most likely gonna kind of peep some shit, kind of put some patterns together and be like, hey, yeah, I noticed that in the mornings you tend to keep to yourself. So maybe we just hang out you know, like later in the day or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like usually people who are interested in your well-being at least a little bit or who want to consider you, those things aren't going to be harsh to them. And I think that we get, I think that sometimes we think that we're the villains because we are a bit more standoffish or because we're slow burners, because we have more boundaries, because we tend to disappoint people or like give people news or information about us that maybe isn't like great to hear in the moment because of how we are. 
But all of these things just inform people of who we are and how to treat us. And this is the opportunity that you have now that you didn't have then. You, you couldn't tell the, the people who are supposed to be your caretakers or your caregivers, your parents, whomever, like you didn't have the opportunity or the language to tell them, hey, I'm not being loved properly. You didn't have that. You have that now. And so I'm saying, let's not perpetuate some shit, y'all. Let's not perpetuate some shit and let's actually open our mouths and say something. Say something, man. Let's do that. And the last one is not even really a point. It's just a reminder to you all, including myself. A relationship is not your entire life. And I'll say this as someone who's in two five-year relationships back to back. In a relationship, even then, even then, you don't have to consider someone else all of the time. Like you still have space to be an, an, an isolated person. You still have space to have your own mission, your own um, goals, your own dreams, your own, like you have, none of that changes. There is a person there that is to consider when you're in a relationship, but even then you don't have to consider them in all things because not all things involve them. And I think that there's just this kind of like warped perspective of the amount of work, nah, the amount of consideration that has to go into like considering another person in a relationship. I would say the hardest part about a relationship is that, is trying to find the balance of what is our shit versus just your shit versus just my shit. Because think of it this way, you both are coming into this relationship and your relationship is, is it's your relationship is an entity in its own. You're, even if it's someone that you're just dating, like your relationship with them is an entity in its own, but you already know what you have to work on. They already know what they have to work on. There are all these external things that, that came way before you even met that person that are going to be activated in your relationship, but because it's activated within you. And so that's what I'm saying where it's like, I think that we think that relationships are like these big burdens and like these big things that require a lot of work and you need to involve another person in every single thing that you do. And it's just like, that's just not true. You could just get with another avoiding girl, honestly. Don't just have two separate houses. I don't know, me, go bowling once a week. I don't know, but like basically you get to customize it. Like it can be whatever you want it to be. Like you can't just like write, like write off relationships just because of one one perspective that you have on it. Like. The more of an active participant you are in your relationships, the more they're going to feel more like something that is actually working within the flow of your life. It's not gonna feel like this thing, this big burden. It's not gonna feel like this thing that doesn't feel safe. It's not gonna feel like this thing that's super annoying because you're actually like engaging with it and you're tweaking it so that it is in your favor and it actually works for you. Yeah, any questions? <laughs>